There's been a great deal of focus in politics on the response of mothers to the pandemic, authoritarianism by government. It turned normally passive women into fierce protectors of their children and families. It wasn't simply because they felt threatened or frustrated. It was what I believe to be a visceral response that came directly from natural law. The instincts of humanity is inclined to liberty and the elevation of the individual. When mothers saw the futures of their children being threatened with authoritarian response and the worst actions of government, they couldn't help but stand up and start to speak. Their motherly voices became bearish and filled with clarity about what they wanted for their loved ones. They showed up in force to city council meetings, school board meetings, and other places where they could use their minds and hearts to protest and persuade others to the harms and damage that this moment was causing. They did their own research, turned off the TV, and decided in large measure to vote against the politicians who had led them down this precarious and perilous path. The governments doubled down on their response, telling the mothers that they were the ones who were uneducated and misinformed. They used their authority to control the situation and arrest the momentum that the mothers were gaining. They silenced them, mocked them, shamed them, and told them that it was the government who were doing the right thing, and it was they that were causing the trauma and damage. Mothers everywhere flocked to alternative sources online. They wanted to find out what the government was mandating they inject in their children. They wanted to find out how to homeschool by conscription. They wanted to find out if masks were good for the development of their children, or if they were as harmful as the results on the ground were illustrating. They found great voices like Children's Defense Network, Dr. Naomi Wolf, Dark Horse Podcast, and others that helped them navigate the waters of untruth that were all around them. Their instincts were telling them that something was dreadfully wrong with the world and the order they had once trusted, but that there were good people who were helping their empirical evidence become more than anecdotal. In this essay, I have asked some others about their thoughts on that time and why they found themselves gravitating to the people they did, both in politics, society, and their social groups. I asked them why they were moving in the direction they were. Their answers were not surprising. Those same instincts that drove them towards natural rights are the same ones that they are relying on now to guide their daily decisions as well as their political ones. Listen to the moms of this country tell us why a good and honest government matters. What they've been awakened to in the poisoning of our children, the destruction of our lived habitats, the evaporation of trust in all the institutions that are supposed to be there for the betterment of their family. It's sobering to think what happened, but encouraging to hear that those motherly instincts have deep human threads and are still the sinew that has and will keep our society held towards a liberty mindset. I think it was tough to be anyone during COVID as mom going through so many unknowns and so much sudden change. It was tough to have kids that we were trying to raise and we were on the verge of making, you know, different decisions for each of them of, uh, to sort of shape their future. And then to have just such, the world suddenly stall out. I felt grateful that I didn't have college age kids quite yet because I think that would have been really challenging. And then young elementary kids that you were trying to mask up and make them go day after day, either with a mask or suddenly to try to do kindergarten or something like that online would have been very difficult. I grew up in a totalitarian regime where everything was owned by the state and every aspect of our lives was controlled by the state. The sharp rise in inflation scares me. I don't see how my children will own a home if something doesn't change. I want an America where the air is pure, the water is clean, the food is organic and minimally processed, and that food is accessible and affordable to all, and where the environment is protected for generations to come. Everything that's happened in the States in the past 20 years, especially during the pandemic, clearly shows that America was headed straight to the dystopia I ran away from in my youth. Government agencies that are supposed to be protecting us just aren't. And as COVID went on and on and on, and we kept being told, go get the vax, go get the vax. I, I knew I didn't, for some reason I didn't want to participate, even though we have never been anti-vax, I guess you would call it. But when it became so pushy, it put a kind of a red flag in my mind of why is this so pushy? 
over the years, the free world started to take on a familiar shape, especially entering 2020. My children haven't seen a fraction of that unity. They have seen our politicians blame each other and refuse to fix glaring problems in front of them. They saw the division coronavirus and its aftermath caused. They're seeing how inflation and lack of affordable health care are dividing us further. We live in a toxic world, especially here in the United States, where the unspoken default business model is to let the buyer beware, and where chemical policy is shaped by the very people who are benefiting the most from pumping these chemicals into our bodies and our environment. The fact that they shut down the world and the schools and all of our kids' programs, and then the fear of a virus being put in our ears, then the pushiness of all kinds of remedies and whatnot put in front of us as well. It, it was hard to, to be a parent. We had kids that really didn't do well with the shutdowns, things that, that they cared about a lot and, and their avenues to see friends and participate in society all of a sudden were gone. And that's really hard on a teenager or young teen to deal with. The United States was en route to a turnkey totalitarianism with the most advanced technological mechanisms to surveil and control every aspect of our lives. When our children are sold to the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry by our educational system, it's not just demoralizing. The end result of it is a catastrophic disease burden, unnecessary suffering, and even tragic early deaths. And we as the nation lose its integrity, trust in the government, confidence in our fundamental rights, and ultimately the future. I want an actual United States of America again, the people, and not just a melange of big corporations and one giant, greedy, corrupted government who thinks of Wall Street before its citizens. I also started to question why are some people's voices sort of being smothered out? And it really actually led me to start to question, well, how do I get alternative information? In early 2022, I watched Bobby Kennedy's speech at the Defeat the Mandate rally in Washington, D.C. In that speech, he elegantly described the deceptive statistical manipulations of the COVID vaccine trial data, the deliberate cover-up of the broken vaccine injury reporting system, and the controlled demolition of democracy carried out in the name of pandemic response. I was excited when I heard that Mr. Kennedy was running for president. His track record in standing up to corporate giants, coupled with his strong intellect and knowledge of political systems and regulatory agencies make him the best man for the job. As a mother, Robert Kennedy has several policies that speak directly to me, but first and foremost is his commitment to clean up our environment. I started to recognize that in today's political landscape, Kennedy might be the only force that can restore democracy, freedom, and our children's health. We need a leader who's not afraid to walk their own path and challenge the status quo for the greater good. What I want as a mother for America is to have a country I'm proud of again. What drew me to Kennedy was that he validated views I'd held for a long time and that he fought to protect the people that suffered the most from these issues. After listening to his interview with Joe Rogan, I was deeply moved by his incredible journey through life, by his achievements for the environment as well as for the victims of big corporations, and by his profound compassion and humility. I'm excited that I can show my kids, one who's now eligible to vote for the first time, that we don't have to settle for the lesser of two evils. We as Americans need another choice. The rise of the Independent Party is a revolution that will free us from the misconception that you have to pick one or the other. That the lesser of two evils is a win for the American people. It's not. I want my children to grow up with a firm belief in the goodness of people, in their own inalienable rights that are safeguarded by our Constitution, and in the value of being good citizens. 
We all need clean air to breathe, pure water to drink, and safe food to eat, as well as plenty of well-preserved and protected wild spaces for our children to grow and connect with nature. A cleaner environment, a healthier mind and body, a freer and more honest spirit was what I came to the U.S. for. I see hope once again that we will rekindle the American values for our future generations.